The simple science of testosterone, beyond just building muscle, beyond all the things we hear about, and a little bit more in how it works more so with your brain than just other parts of your body. I wanna explain in this video what really happens when you have that natural decline in testosterone, say after age 30 or so. I wanna explain and really have you understand what's happening hormonally and why things shut down. Because I think once there's an understanding there, a lot of things just start to make more sense. Now I wanna start out by talking about something called the HPTA, the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. It's a mouthful, so we're just gonna to refer to it as the HPTA axis. Basically, it's super complex, but I'm gonna make it simple. It comes down to three parts of your body, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, which are both in your brain, and of course, your testes. Now, the production of testosterone starts with the hypothalamus. You see, the hypothalamus creates something that's called GnRH. It's a hormone, and that hormone triggers the pituitary, another portion of your brain, to create two hormones that are called luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH. Those two hormones, LH and FSH, are absolutely imperative when it comes down to creating testosterone. You see, because what they do is after the pituitary gland has created them, is they travel way on down from the brain, down into your loins and into the testes where they actually are combined with cholesterols to ultimately produce testosterone and other sex hormones. They combine with those cholesterols in these things called Leydig cells. And from there, you are creating testosterone. You're also creating some other hormones. You're even creating progesterone. You're even creating some of these other things that affect your energy levels. But for now, we're gonna focus mainly just on testosterone. Now, once that LH and FSH are down in the testes getting converted into the proper hormones, it's important to know what happens. You see, the LH combines with cholesterols that we consume and cholesterols that are created to create that testosterone while the FSH combines with cholesterols and foods that we eat to ultimately create the sperm count. You see, they work hand in hand. Obviously, we need testosterone, we need a libido, but we also need the sperm count for simple procreation reasons. It's the purpose of testosterone in the first place. So that's how that really works down there. Without those Leydig cells that allow that conversion to happen, you just have LH and FSH floating around through the body with nothing ever happening. Now, another thing that's important to know is that your brain isn't always producing that GnRH. You see, we have to take special care of our brain. It's way more important than we think. That hypothalamus that is producing that GnRH is only producing it in pulses. You see, a lot of times we hear that testosterone levels are higher in the morning. Well, it's mainly because our brain is producing a pulse of GnRH, usually first thing in the morning. But what's interesting enough is that it doesn't just go with time of day, it also goes with circadian rhythm, when you sleep, but it also can go with time of year. Interestingly enough, GnRH and testosterone levels are usually higher in the springtime, and it makes sense. When we think about it from an evolution standpoint, why would we want to be procreating in the wintertime when in some regions it's absolutely sub-zero and barely survivable? So as it starts to get warmer, of course, then our brain, not our testes, but our brain senses that it's time for more testosterone. You see, I think the fixation has to come off of testosterone in general and think more about brain health because our brain needs to realize that it's time to produce testosterone. So as long as we protect that with a golden sword and really think about it, then we can be well on our ways to having better testosterone levels. Okay, so it's all fine and dandy now, right? Except we gotta take it one step further because you know me, I'm always throwing a wrench in things and throwing more science and making it super complicated because that's just the way I roll. But anyway, it goes down to one more thing. You see, then we go into what is called DHT. DHT is dehydrotestosterone. Dehydrotestosterone is the actual usable form of free testosterone. When it comes down to building muscle, when it comes down to growing a beard, when it comes down to having a sex drive, when it comes down to getting that six pack, it comes down to that DHT. Well, newsflash for you, DHT or that free form of testosterone only makes up about 2% of the overall testosterone that you've gone through this entire process to create. Only 2% if you're lucky. The other 98% is bound to something called the sex hormone binding globulin. Another topic for another day, but basically what that SHBG does is it locks that testosterone within the sex hormone world, creating testosterone for later, creating cortisol, creating different progesterones, creating pregnenolone and other hormones that create other hormones. So basically we're left with a small 2%. Well, as our levels of testosterone decline, 
You can imagine how that 2% gets even smaller and smaller and smaller. So that precious 2% that we've got to build muscle or to have a sex drive or to have energy or to have strong bones declines and declines with age and it becomes more precious. Now another thing to note that's pretty interesting is something called a negative feedback loop. You see, when you have enough testosterone produced as a safety mechanism to not produce too much, your brain recognizes it. You see, it's got what are called androgen receptors. These androgen receptors see that you have enough testosterone floating around and it says, okay brain, don't produce any more hormones to create testosterone. Basically, we have enough testosterone, don't create too much. We don't want to cause a problem. That is called a negative feedback loop. The brain is very smart. You can't outsmart your brain. That's why those that are using exogenous testosterone they usually have an issue with getting their natural levels back up to par because that negative feedback loop is artificially disrupted. Well, that can also happen with aging at a different level. You see, as testosterone levels decline and as GnRH declines, a lot of times your body starts to create more LH and FSH in an effort to produce more testosterone. Well, creating more LH and more FSH can trigger that negative feedback loop that ultimately shuts down testosterone production even more. But I would say the most common reason that men over 30 start to have a decline in testosterone is mainly because of those Leydig cells, those Leydig cells that are down in the testes that convert the LH and FSH into a usable form of testosterone by combining with cholesterol. You see, they shrink, they die off, they actually atrophy and decrease in mass, which means there's less area for them to convert that cholesterol. So there's some ways that I'm gonna explain that you can combat that just simply through your nutrition. It comes down to timing more than anything. We talk about that GnRH, we talk about that LH and that FSH, but we also have to look at the natural pulses. You see, if we don't have a hypothalamic issue or a pituitary issue where we're still at least producing the hormones that drive testosterone production, then all we have to do is get ourselves some more cholesterol so we can at least increase the potential to convert more testosterone. You see, if you have a Leydig cell that's say this big, and it's obviously enlarged, then you're gonna have the X amount of cholesterol that comes in. Well, it's only gonna be able to utilize some of that cholesterol, the rest is gonna float around to other parts of the body. As that cell gets smaller because of age, you need to make sure you're getting the right kind of cholesterols and increasing your good healthy cholesterols so that you have a better chance of grabbing those cholesterols and converting them into testosterone. Now the other thing that you can really do to help your natural testosterone levels is stop focusing on just testosterone and focus on your brain. So you take care of your brain with the right kind of fats you know, with the right kind of omega-3s versus omega-6. Heck, even meditation, as cheesy as it may sound, you have to protect this house because that is the catalyst for everything that creates the body that you want. But then, last but not least, you wanna eat your fats predominantly in the morning. Get them in the morning when your brain is already stimulating that GnRH pulse as is, even if it's declined, even if it's smaller, capitalize on that and try to get the most out of your testosterone levels. There's a bunch of other ways that you can do that, and I'm gonna ask you to watch my interview on ESPN that I did with Dr. Cole specifically talking about this topic. Dr. Cole is the team physician for the Chicago Bulls. He's the team physician for the Chicago White Sox. But basically, what we are gonna discuss is natural ways to increase your testosterone, but also talk a little bit more about how you can take care of this HPTA axis and get the most out of your life. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos and on my channel. And if you have any ideas for videos, post them in the comment section below so that I can determine which ones are gonna be the best for you. As always, see you in the next video.